Now then, we have a different subject today. And let's have a look at these paintings. The first one, the more you gaze at it, the more you realise it's an exercise in perspective. We've got parallel lines and we've got converging lines. You can look at this for a long time and just absorb it. If you want to look at it, just stop the video. The next one is a seascape. And you can see the violence in this sea. It's the east coast I suspect. I really treasure this one. For reasons that um, will be apparent later in the video. And there we are. Matt Gregory. Anyway, I've organised to go and see him today in his studio. So if you want to come along that would be great. And here we are in Max studio. And he's just getting himself sorted out. abstract type design and then she said to me I can see you're left-handed you see she said because you wipe your brush on your I said well done Meg really <laughs> <laughs> which went down like a lead balloon actually <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you could you could um, that smock in itself is that's a work of art it's a it? work of art exactly <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, one of the great uh, sort of um, fashion design houses yeah. would go. That is perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they would they would recreate it. Mm. Yeah, and it would be just. But there you go. Because there's some sort of. If you look on that arm there. Yeah. It is. There's something about that. It's almost like an impressionist. Yeah, sort it has of a certain sort of je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're just in Max Studio and we're just going to potter about yes, definitely. and just go as far as we can see. Yeah. That, um, that picture that I showed you earlier on of the seascape, that was um, a, a present from Mac to myself when I was 40. And then a couple of years ago when heating, no not that book, when Timber for Building was, uh, was published, came and had a cup of tea and I went, here you are Mac, happy birthday and gave him a copy of the book and he went, it's not my birthday and I went, does it matter? <laughs> well, there every, we go. every day if you're alive is your birthday. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> every day is a bonus. Yeah, every day is Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> now. Right. If you talk to yourself, you always get a reasonable response. You well, I never did. get into arguments. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> there's the other half of yourself who just goes, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing that. Or there's your upbringing. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it just creeps out of the woodwork and decides that actually, you know, somebody 40 years ago said something and you've got to act upon it. Yeah. So Max just showing as one of his... More modern seascapes. Yeah. Preliminary sketch, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The um, the sun looks rather large. Yeah, it is. Or is it the moon? No, it is the sun. Yeah. I like suns. Yeah. As long as they're not too hot. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, as long as they're not too bossy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. But to my mind, that sun is in the north. But that's only because we live on the east coast. It is, yeah. Yeah. So this, this is called Approaching Storm with Sunrise. And it's a colour drawing on paper. Right. So that is colour pencils. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we're going to have... Shall we go. try and work out a little painting from this then? That would be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know um, how I really start, but I suppose if I was um, 
teach you somebody. I don't, uh, you can just work in rough areas because I think pencils are for drawing lines and brushes are for making large, for making colours. large areas. Yes. But anyway, just to make it a bit simple, now normally I lay, lay my paints out in a certain order, but I haven't done at the moment because we're just messing about. Of course we are. And, um, and I always work on glass. Uh, because you can always put a coloured paper under the glass, so if you're working on the coloured palette, you can have coloured paper under the glass. Oh, so you can so see. So you mix your colours, and so you know what they're going to look like when they get on there. You see? Right. It's like somebody in Quaker said, um, "Oh, haven't you got it? Would, would you like a chair with arms, Mac?" I said, "No, I'm a pacifist, so I don't mind being armless." <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, yeah, designed to upset. Yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. So uh, you're just mixing a white I'm just, there? I'm just mixing a colour and I suppose if I was giving it a demo, I'd just put in roughly where my horizon is. Like that. Yeah. I tend to use um, brushes with my left hand and if I'm using a painting knife I use my right hand. So if I... Uh, oh, so you're ambidextrous? Yeah. But we don't talk about it. <laughs> 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 but a, a, a palette knife, that's for that's a, oils. That's a painting knife. That's yes. a painting knife. Yeah. Is that for oils yes. or for anything? Well, I could use it with acrylics, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Right. This so is... if, if, I'm, if I was going to draw this in to try, to try and explain to people, then I'd use an umber, which dries very quickly. So, um, and now my, <clears throat> I've got a cliff here, I think I can't even see the drawing now. Right, hang on a minute. I'm and work like what artists think, pe people think artists work like, <laughs> which I don't. But uh, just to make people happy, you would have your working sketch here. Yes. Well, that makes sense. But I tend to use a bit, I only use this for smaller paints. I use that big easel, big studio easel there. There was that uh, huge thing, bit on the what artists do all day mm. Jack Vetriano was going on about using photographs mm. and he thought that a lot of artists poo pooed the idea of mm. taking photographs yeah. but it makes perfect sense doesn't yeah. it yeah yeah because um, you copy in life mm. and if life's in a photograph mm. then it's the, tr the trouble with photographs I mean I use photographs as a starting off point if I've taken the photograph yeah. um, but I tend to use working drawings and, and photographs are just um, Unless you use a twin lens reflex, photographs are very flat. Ah. Um, and uh, we, we only think we see like that. We don't see in rectangles or squares or at all. It's just a convention because if I was to say, if, this, if I was really working in space and, and perspective is a light, it's like saying two and two makes five, because you have to assume that all points on the canvas are the same distance from the eye, but they're not. So. If you are nailed to the floor and you've got one eye, and I do this, I've all, already created apparent depth on the two-dimensional plane. See, <clears throat> if I'm being a conventional artist, you're working in an area like this, and you're going to say, how can I make my board look unflat, look as though it's got depth, yeah. apparent depth? And I've got various tools at my um, command. I've got pers linear perspective, so there's your railway line. That's, um, you've got aerial perspective, which is colour. Cool colours go back, warm colours come in front. So if I put a sort of bluey colour here, if I were to do that, it's back to front painting is really in it, and do that. That looks, well you wouldn't see the red, but that looks nearer to me than that, so I've already created a few Even though the, 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 the red is yeah. smaller? Yeah. Right, so yeah. it doesn't work on the Father Ted principle? No, I mean, if, if, you, if, if I were to do that and that, I would assume that's nearer to me because yes. it's lower down on the board. But, oh. if, but if I make that bigger, yeah. that could be nearer to me now. Could be. Yeah. Um, so... So the ways you can achieve 
a feeling of depth or apparent depth. It's not really. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lie. So you've got overlapping shapes. So that one is in front of that one. Yeah. If I do that, you've got transparency, so you can look through one to another one. Then you've got, as I said, um, relative size. I would assume that is nearer to me than that because it's bigger and lower down. So relative. So it's the lower down in the, the lower down. It looks nearer to you. you yeah, I can see that. You assume it's nearer to you, unless I did this. That's a big, big bird with big feet coming towards me. <laughs> So he would be yeah, near. I'm sure you see it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and the, only, the only way you should actually paint is if you put your head inside a sphere, so you've got a curved surface. Yeah. Then each point on that sphere would be the same distance from the eye. Yes. So that then you would get your true perspective. So this is all based on a false concept, and um, I think it was Brunelleschi and Leonardo started this idea of linear perspective. So that if they were <coughs> say doing the design of a building or something for a prospective client they could actually get this is what it's going to look like and an artist's it, impression yeah it, it would look like it but of course nowadays you've got digital stuff which is actually you know visual um, reality virtual reality right, yeah, yeah. Um, this is where the camera obscura and all right, that yeah. lot came in wasn't yeah, it yeah the camera obscura um, you've got the image upside down but it allows you to put points on yes. the canvas yes. where things yeah. should be. That's right, this is how Canaletto did his paintings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, yeah, coming back to another thought I wanted to discuss with you, whilst you're cracking on with that, yeah, yeah. is yeah, this whole thing, because uh, about art and artists, and especially about artists, because I was in the woods a couple of months ago, we were marking a block of timber yeah. and I was talking to the contractor who is a, he's basically a coppice worker, uh, so he's more in tune with making things and, and craft. Yeah. And we were just discussing the fact of what is an artist yeah. and I sort of came up with an idea that an artist is somebody who has to... Um, has to create whatever they create and they don't do it by going I know I'm going to do this today no. it just happens yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you might have um, a basic thought of what you're going to do but actually you're going on the voyage, voyage of discovery because if you've already got the idea exactly what you're going to do you've already done it and you're just copying it out of your head and it loses that spontaneity yeah so um, you may, I may start off with this, and as I go along, certain ideas will come to me, and I'll change things, and colours might um, affect me in a different way. Now, if I were to do this um, very quickly, what they call premier coup painting, so you've done it all in one go, it will have a certain amount of spontaneity, but it might lack a, lack a bit of structure. Next day you look at it and you think, what a load of rubbish. But you can always change it. Yeah, so you change it. But yeah. the danger is you might lose the spontaneity and just get something which is really turgid and worked on too much. So it's, you've got a, it's a fine dividing line. And also, your outlook may be different the next day as well. Oh, definitely. So, um, yeah, the madness might yeah, have returned. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So um, it, it's a compromise in a way. But you're going on the voyage of discovery because things, and it's knowing when to stop. That's the art. Yeah. <laughs> with life as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, only well, that's only decided I'll... for you, isn't it, with life? You <laughs> yeah. know, somebody goes boom, yeah, you've had it. enough. That's <laughs> it. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, perfect. Mm. perfect. So it is this whole thing about an artist does stuff, not because they wake up in the morning and go, I know I'm going to be an artist. Mm. It just happens without him focusing on it, really. It's just like... It, there's more to it than just the thought process. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you just... I mean, what happens when you in a situation where you can't paint? Mm. You yeah. get very depressed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. And also you get depressed when you are painting. If, it, <laughs> if it's not going right, right. but it's a, it's a different form of depression. But, um, no, if you go days without painting, and if I go away on holiday away, 
yeah, that day or so they think, oh, I wish I was home and alone. It goes, oh, you're always saying that, you want to be home. I always want to be at yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, well, I want to be painting. I mean, you see things, you go, oh, I'd love to paint that. Yeah. And, um, well, that gives me some idea of what, what I would like to do. And then the, you make, I take sketchbooks and make notes and I often write things down. I mean, I might draw a line and put blue sky, you know, black rock or something. Yeah. Um, but it's just... To, I mean, you only need a few lines to get you going. You don't need a complete. It brings workout. back that memory. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yes. otherwise, they can just get lost, can't they? they? In the mire of nonsense. That's, that's it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That's why I like to write every day. Mm. Even though I might even do two hundred words, mm. you're on that little bit of a roller coaster. Because if right. you find you stop, it's very difficult to start. Again. Exactly. It is. Yeah, it yeah. Is. So and I find you know when we get lots of interruptions. Uh, you know, somebody says, I don't <laughs> oh, yes, somebody <laughs> says, oh, you've got half an hour, go and do a bit of painting. You, you <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> no, of course you can't. But I can with my books, yeah. because I know I've done a bit before the day before, well, the point and I've is, left myself clues. That's right. Even if you work in the stu studio and you're just tidying things up, you're not painting, and you're putting things away and cleaning things ready to paint, that's just as useful. Oh, dead right, it's like preparation. Preparation, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got to get rid of my little demo marks now. Yeah, well, there's the beauty of... Um, are these are oils, are they? Yes, yeah. yeah. So you just paint over them? Yeah, you, if, if it gets too messy, you just wipe it off. Right. Um, I, li I like oils because you can mess about with them. Acrylics I have used, but I don't find them so satisfying, although, of course, you get instant effects very quickly. Is this because they dry very they quickly? They dry very quickly, yeah. And once they're dried, you can't put anything on there to oh, revitalise them. You can paint over them. Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes if, if, if you're working, to, I mean, I'm working towards an exhibition at the moment, but um, you can actually use an acrylic base and then you just work on the top with oil, but you can't put acrylic on top of oil, but you can put oil on top of acrylic. <sighs> Um, yeah. Is that because the oils take yeah, so I mean, long it, to dry? Yes, and also, well, also um, uh, if you put, which, which acrylic is basically water-based, and you put it on top of oil, it's not going to stay on. Oh, no. It gradually lift at yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, um, I think, again, in that art, what artists do every day, there's John Byrne, who, uh, from Scotland somewhere, and he was talking about the fact that as you you know the techniques yes. to how as you were saying about um, perspective and whatnot yeah. you've got the techniques but it doesn't make the painting any easier no no, no. no. it's still this sort of thing of it's now and at the moment and tomorrow it will be different yeah yeah I'm just going to let you crack on with that. I'll switch the camera off for a minute. And they charge him 500 quid then to do the catalogues. This and is in, in a gallery? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the artist had to pay... To, I mean, I've been very lucky at times, because if I've been invited, I haven't had to pay. Yes. Um, but nine times out of ten now, they're all feeling the pinch of it. There's always things like, I've done my own printing this time, I had to pay for that. But um, <coughs> they have... And the real big boys, some of whom used to take 80%, uh, they'd keep a painting. That's a part of the deal. You have an exhibition, they'll have a painting as well for themselves in case you make it. So some of them think that artists are naive. Yeah. Yeah. So an artist has got to be a business person, yeah, yeah. a production manager, yeah. and an artist yeah. as well. Which is very difficult. I mean, the loaner is good. I mean, actually, she sold a lot of work for me. Right. And um, she's much more money conscious than I am. I mean, uh, I, I know what money is. <laughs> but um, uh, but I, I tend to get carried away. And um, so she, she does a lot of the um, organising now. I'm using a very limited palette at the moment. Because I'm mean. <laughs> I don't want to use a lot of 
expensive paint. Yeah, while I'm just daubing about. Yes, um, yeah. Yeah, because it, it's, it's like, in this situation, it's funny, your average person would look at that and go, what on earth is going on there? Yeah. But you're just building up layers, aren't That's you? That's right, yeah. Just working out. I should really have a bigger brush. Sometimes I use house painting brushes and I can get whack. Really? Yeah, one in yeah. the boat. Um, yeah. So it's like you're working out what you're doing and you know that you can come over the top of it. Yeah. It yes. You see, I don't need this little exercise in perspective here. No. So I can take that out. And is that a bit of turps you've got in there yeah. in that rag? Yeah, yeah you just I'm lift just using, it off. I'm just using board meat turps at the moment. But if I'm if I'm doing a proper well, doing a proper, <laughs> proper painting, painting. Um, yeah. what like proper artists do? Yeah, if I, yeah, if I'm a proper artist, I, then I will use painting mediums. I'll use a bit of linseed oil mixed with the turps, and or I might even use liquid. People have said. And then sometimes the idea think, oh great, and knock out a few prints, but the prints are worthless. Apart unless you just want it to look at it. But if you're thinking of you haven't got something really original then, have you? You haven't, but then you can enjoy it. Again, you can. Jack yeah. Vetriano That's right. he has loads of prints. That's right. And yeah. he said and there was an interesting one, he said, People have a go at me for what I do. Yeah. And the art establishment doesn't recognise him. That's right. Yeah? Yeah. But he said, would I rather be on somebody's wall yeah. or in the basement of the Tate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And so when you put prints out there, your average person can enjoy it. That's right. It makes it accessible. That's right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in favour of prints yeah. as long as you buy them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a limited number of prints. But then Jack Vatriano doesn't do that. He he goes, it's for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, there's the different schools of thought on that. But yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, people have said, would you, would you do prints? One gallery said, don't do prints because you, you've, you've produced a one-off, nobody else can have it. It's <laughs> it. But, yeah. um, it yeah. is, I mean, this is why people did etchings in the past, because you can keep printing them off. Just print and yeah. print. And um, so everybody, it makes it more accessible. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, because subsequently the plates get um, worn and the later etchings aren't as good as the... Not as crisp. No. No. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It's um, it's a shame in some ways that all the groins from along this uh, this coastline here have gone, isn't it? Yeah. They get. Um, I think it comes twice a year. I've seen it. I've seen it twice anyway since we've been we've been here for four years now. Um, this Dutch dredger comes. Yeah. And it pumps all the sand out from the sea down there. You can see it at one end, and they have massive pipes all along the beach and they bring the sand back onto the beach then you go to the other end and do the same. So the sand's been washed away and I said to somebody, why is this happening? It's well, you took away the groins. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have to pay the Dutch yeah. at least once a year to come and suck all the, the sand, sand back, back on the beach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And of course they, they took the groins out rather than just leaving them there and yeah. piling the sand on top of them. Yeah. Yeah. Which are like, you what? This is like neat and tidy, tidy and neat gone mad, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I can see it's starting, isn't it? Gradually. Yeah. It's um, yeah. very gradual. And when we're always taught to work all over the painting, so you build it up as a whole, so it, no matter what stage you leave it, it is a complete unit. Is that right? Yeah. But you see people like Stanley Spence, I mean, I saw one of his paintings. And yet, actually, it's so big it was rolled up like a big piece of lino. You painted on what you could see and rolled it up. So, <laughs> and Picasso paint, you could have two boards and you'd do a circle, one half circle, one gun to another, and they'd match. You know, no. Yeah, yeah, or figure. And yes. It would match. So it, would li it would line up in yeah, other words. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And I imagine you do as well. Speaking your mind. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Problem is, my mind changes. Yeah. <laughs>
well, it's not really a problem, it's a good thing. Yeah, you say things at one point and then you find that uh, you don't believe it anymore when you change. Well, you're allowed to change anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Milligan who said, uh, I've changed my mind because I've got one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's horrible to be backed into a position yeah. where, you know, you can't change your mind. Yeah. And I'm sure politicians have that trouble. Yeah. But actually, if they would just go, okay, I've changed my mind. Yeah? And instead of saying a U-turn, it's enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm just changing my mind. I've, I've yeah. seen the light. That's right. Or yeah. I've been given more information yeah. about this yeah. and I've listened to more argument. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, everybody's really wanting to knock everybody, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Although some of them deserve it, obviously. It's all short termism anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't help anybody, does no, it? No, it doesn't, no. I mean, very antisocial. Now I've got to the position where... If I Have you indeed? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with the karma suture. Um, where I could actually start painting. And I'd have to get rid of this, but you can just see it, that now is coming here. Right, yes. Yeah, yeah. The drawings there, that's the sun. <laughs> and then I was, I'd, I'd make this very dark here now to give me some contrast. Of a sort of a purpley, bluey sort of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I see. I mean, I'm, um, I'm not copying nature. Uh, an artist's job is really to improve upon nature. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was religion was supposed to do that. Yeah, well, art is a religion. Yeah. <coughs> um, oh. But um, in colour, you know, they've got the colour of the spectrum. Yeah. Light. So white light can be broken down into those seven colours. We, we haven't got that colour range with pigments. So if we, we have to obviously... Um, Emphasize if we wanted something to be dark, you, so you get if you wanted something to be light, you make something a bit darker, yeah, to make it look lighter. To make it, I mean, Turner actually painted the fantastic feelings of light at times, and everything was light. But the point is, we have a very limited range. If we've got, say, our primary colors, if you have um, a disc red, yellow, and blue, and you spin it fast, it'll look white. Is that right? Yes, um, because those red, yellow, and blue are the basic colors. I mean, there aren't more, but yeah. if you start off with red, yellow, and blue, you can get 72 different colours by judicious mixing. And if you use black and white, which are the extremities, which aren't colours, you can get 1,800 variations. That's enough, isn't yeah, it? it is. Yeah. Now, but the point is, you can't compete with nature, because you can't compete with light. So you have to find equivalents. You have because, to work with nature rather than fight it. Yes, but then you, you use parts of nature... Because obviously if you take a landscape, you look at the landscape um, and you just do a section of the landscape, it's like painting somebody's arm, isn't it? It's like chopping a bit off. Yes. So you've got to make that piece of landscape that you've lifted, you've got to make that look a, like a complete unit within itself. So you may have to use artistic margins, you might have to move a couple of trees or you might have to obliterate a telegraph pole or put two in where there's only one so to make a better composition. That reminds me about your your uh, Fenland paintings of the roads mm -hmm. and all the all the uh, telephone or electric mm -hmm. poles are all on the angle mm -hmm. and it's very redolent of what mm -hmm. it's like round here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Mac. Yeah. Really enjoyed okay. this. Right. Nice one. <laughs>